Wheat flour products have been vilified and blamed for an increase in obesity in the past 100 years. But wait! Bread has been a staple food and a great source of nutrition for countless generations of humans. What has changed? Hello everyone, my name is George and welcome to Telvia. In this second episode of my YouTube series on bread making at home, I will explain the nutritional benefits of fermenting flour and share our quest for cultivating our own yeast culture. So take a few minutes, relax and enjoy. Consider the words of Professor Bruce German, a food scientist at UC Davis. He says, if I gave you a bag of flour in water, you could live on it for a while, but eventually you would die. But if you take the same bag of flour and bake it into bread, you would live indefinitely. In this quote, the bread is the product of baking a mixture of flour, water, salt, and yeast. The results from a large randomized trial of adults recently vaccinated with seasonal influenza who also received an over-the-counter dairy modified brewer's yeast-based product, Epicor, to prevent colds and flu symptoms shows that participants receiving the yeast-based product had significantly fewer symptoms and significantly shorter duration of symptoms when compared with the subject taking a placebo. In these times of pandemic, consuming yeast products present in leavened bread could provide a better protection against infection. Today, however, most of commercially sold products containing wheat flour are made from unfermented flour. The modern science and history of food making tell us that fermentation of wheat flour is important for our health and well-being. But it is easier and less expensive to make foods with longer shelf life using unfermented flour and such products sold everywhere. So should we refuse consuming unfermented flour products? To put wheat flour fermentation in perspective, Let's briefly review the food fermentation practices by humans that started as long as 7000 BC. Early humans began to embrace using microbes in food preparation because of their benefits, namely more digestible food, food that kept longer, was less likely to make you sick, or simply tasted better than unfermented foods. Yeast is the term generally applied to unicellular fungus, and there are hundreds of species now identified. The yeast spores are present in the air and on the surfaces in every environment. One of the most notable and well-known species of yeast is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is also known by its more common names, brewer's yeast or baker's yeast. At the beginning of fermentation, enzymes in yeast start breaking down starch into more simple sugars. The yeast uses these sugars, as well as sugars already present in the dough, and produces not only carbon dioxide and alcohol, but also a host of flavorful byproducts such as organic acids and amino acids. In our quest for the best suited strain of yeast for our bread, we have decided to select a strain from yeast present on the wheat grain itself and from the microenvironment of our own kitchen. The objective for selecting our own yeast culture was to select a yeast strain that thrives and multiplies in its biomass on our own milk flour. Selecting the right strain of yeast took more than two weeks of rigorous dividing and feeding procedure recommended for developing a leavening starter. Once the strain of yeast that thrived on our own whole grain flour was selected, the leavening and baking bread could begin. To keep our yeast culture healthy, we feed it every day by splitting feeding method where a tablespoon of the starter is transferred to a new vessel containing our whole grain flour and water. We also reserve the fermented flour material in the refrigerator for other baking projects, which I will talk about in the third episode of this series. Leavening flour with yeast culture is like farming a large herd of microbes grazing on the vast pastures of flour particles, which they convert into yeast protein, vitamins, and absorbable microelement compounds. It is also fun to watch the culture bubble when it's happy, almost like having a path in a jar. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Leaven and bake your own bread. And let me know in comments about your baking experience. See you in the next video where I will share tips and tricks for baking breads and pancakes 
from our home milled flour. Meanwhile, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.